transmuter. Give it to me. The 30th episode of Star Trek, Cat's Paw, had a tough act to follow. The previous week, NBC had aired The Doomsday Machine, and viewers likely expected to be treated to the same level of excitement, perhaps only to be feel a little tricked. After all, Cat's Paw aired just four days before Halloween 1967. Trick or treat, Captain? Yes, Mr. Spock. You'd be a natural. I'll explain it to you one day. In a July 2022 poll of a Facebook Star Trek group, nearly half of respondents rated Cat's Paw with three stars, an average episode. Another 20% said it was good, and 23% called it poor. Although this is really nobody's favorite episode, Gerald Freed was off and running to compose some of the most important music of the series. Although it aired in late October, Freed's complete score for Cat's Paw was the first music recorded for production season two. The studio session on June 21st, four months earlier, produced over 30 minutes of music, much of which was written for a small clarinet ensemble. Why clarinets? I took off from uh, what's the essential uh, musical quality of a cat or a cat's paw? Well, uh, the clarinet, and Prokofiev thought so too in Peter and the Wolf. And also a cat, you know, boom, boom, boom. if you could put sound to a cat's footfall, it would be a clarinet. Uh, so I wrote that for like five clarinets. A splendid example of the light motif is Sergei Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. Each character has its own theme expressed by its own instrument. Prokofiev's motif for the cat is written for clarinet. In Cat's Paw, Freed's black cat motif sets the tone and direction with just three notes. E flat, E natural, and D natural. Tonic, half step up, whole step down. Now keep that in your ear as we move forward. I count five cues composed for an assortment of clarinets, but I want to focus in on the fourth. Cue M35, Sylvia. This was the scene where Korob excuses the cat from the dining hall, but returning through the same door... is the woman, Sylvia. She's the cat. Well, what intrigues me about this cue is the musical transformation to match the physical transformation of the character. At first, Freed uses a trio of two bass and one contrabass clarinet with staccato marking to get the feel of Prokofiev's cat, that sort of boom, boom, boom. Well, this is interrupted as the cat scampers from the room but when Sylvia appears, Freed's motif is in a higher register on two clarinets and one bass clarinet, and it's slower and more legato. In my score transcription, I've circled in red the three-note lead-off passages because, again, they're important moving forward. In many ways, you are quite admirable. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, there's an old saying, hell hath no fury as a woman scorned. Well, by now you know where the story is going. Captain Kirk must find any weakness to exploit if he's to save the Enterprise and his landing party. And he finds it, at first, in Sylvia. Well, Kirk uses her by faking physical attraction with her. She soon figures this out and is, well, a little hurt, shall we say. Think what you will about the script. But Freed's task was to score music that fits the trajectory of the storyline. Now, we'll touch on some of the other great music in a bit, but I want to pick up where Korob turns against the out-of-control Sylvia by trying to help Kirk and Spock to escape. The cue Rescue builds on this tension as the three look for a way out. Now, remember those three notes, the tonic, half step up, whole step down? You're about to hear the climactic adaptation of the Cat Sylvia theme, this time not with clarinets. Check out my transcription and again, look for the red circle. In case you've missed my earlier video about the practice of tracking, real quickly, the Musicians Union rules of the day allowed TV producers to reuse recorded music in the same production season, provided they guarantee about 40 hours minimum studio time. This tracked cue became a common scene closer in season two. In fact, most of the cues from Cat's Paw were heard in later episodes and qualify as killer cues. This may be my longest killer cue yet, and I'm just going to let the reel roll. In the mythology of your race, this is called sympathetic magic. Jackson. The crew member who returned to the ship. You won. Did I disturb you? Did you wish anything? I mean, if they don't know anything about... What I mean is... They don't seem to have any natural, uh, I mean, how is it done? Oh, I mean, real girls. We are programmed to function as human females, Lord. You are? Yes, yes my, my Lord. Harry Mudd programmed you? Yes, my Lord. That unprincipled, evil-minded, lecherous kulak Harry Mudd programmed you? Yes, my Lord. Dead, Jim. Just like the other one. Stabbed. Over and over again. Stop! No man. 
valid entrances to any human mind. Telepathy. Go to sleep. Uh, what? what do you mean? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait a minute, gentlemen. No, no, what I had ah, in mind was actually more on the line of uh, a few words of say. No? Kirk to Enterprise, come in. Come in. Enterprise, I'm Captain Kirk. Come in. Captain. Red check, red check, red check, red check, red check! Ah! <laughs> 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 But our contact, sir. The entire system's inhibited. The way it is now, we couldn't beam up a fly. Episode 30, Cat's Paw, to me, rates very highly. Not because of the story so much, but because of the music and its far-reaching impact on the entire series. But Gerald Freed wasn't done yet. And almost a companion work was his score on production episode 32, Friday's Child. And we'll look into this equally important music on the next Scoring Star Trek. Thanks for watching. Check long and prosper. <laughs>